So let's kick in and get ourselves underway in our marathon run that is the user group each month. So we're here today for the Microsoft 365 Adoption User Group for May. The links have been provided in chat. They're also on the screen along with the bit.ly link for the presentation that's available for you to be able to go and have a look. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting from today and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples who have joined us today. Okay. I ask that we please be welcoming, opening, open to all questions, the viewpoints we have. We have differences that come at this in terms of our understanding. So I ask that we be kind, we be friendly, we use appropriate gifts in our chat and ultimately just be considerate to others. I am Kirsty McGrath. I am adoption consultant and trainer. I have on point solutions and I have been running the user groups now for over over eight years. So that's all my details. I always start with a bit of a, you know, what have I been up to? OK, <coughs> it was a um, it was a busy month. It was a busy month. So I went to the Brisbane International Cake Show and this is my Alice in Wonderland uh, storybook that um, I did. So we had a little bit of fun there in terms of um, uh, the what we were actually creating on the day. It's always it's always pretty cool. Some of the things I get into that was a hardcore two day course with a with an international specialist. So when we got in and underway, so this was me, just to prove it was me actually doing the cake. So here I am with my classroom. Um, sometimes I wonder if I bite off more than I can chew. The vast proportion of people in the room were actually professionals, if not award winners at the International Cake Show. So I kind of went, OK, I really must be enjoying this. I do my usual Sunday morning bushwalks, getting out and about. This one was up to the Lane Cove Way. There's always some fabulous bushwalks around Sydney and New South Wales. I have been in kitten training. She has got her um, uh, harness now, so we get out and about with the harness and we have a bit of fun with the harness and out about. And then I've got a sling because she wants to sit up here all the time, so I'm trying to protect my back a little bit more. Also did the comedy festival, so that was at the opera house, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, what I did particularly like in this one, James, you'll enjoy, because it was actually with the Viva, Viva team, along with the sweep of the Viva team. They came to town, so I got to hang out with Steve whilst he was here in Sydney. We went down to the opera bar. There might be some faces there in the room that you actually recognise. Um, we had, you know, Melinda was there. So Melinda usually is here, so I can't see if Melinda's there yet. <clears throat> usually on the on the call. And uh, Mark Woodrow and Ben. So well, it was fabulous to hang out with them all. So that's what I've been up to over the last month. Uh -huh. Now let's kick in and have a chat with our guest speaker. So James. Now, yay, James is back again. It's fabulous to have you back again. Um, it was it was a while ago now that we had you in. I think pretty much close to nearly two years, I think, since you were last oh. in and talking about Viva. I would say around about time. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's pretty close too. Uh, so I'll let you take away. You can do a bit of an introduction to yourself, take over control of the screen, all of the fun stuff so that we can start to talk about answers and get stuck into answers. I'm just gonna thank and by the way, I gotta say I loved your Kate. My kids have both been sick. And they finally got around to watching Is It Cake on Netflix. Oh, isn't I don't it know fabulous? if anyone could do a thumbs up if they've seen it. Yeah, I got hooked as well, even though it's the most silly show. The same thing happens season upon season, but it's great. Uh -huh. But yours were really impressive there. That was very cool. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Go If you ever get a chance, if you're in Brisbane around Easter, the International Cake Show, that Is It Cake is, is rather impressive. Some of the stuff that they do, <laughs> very clever, because it's a big international one. And they do hold them right around the globe. But, yes, yeah, so you've got to love some of those cake shows. <laughs> awesome. Um, so thank you for having me. Yes, I'm James. I'm on the Viva Engage customer experience team. Um, we're going to be talking about answers today, but answers is a key component of Viva Engage. I was going to run through a real abbreviated version of the webinar that I did recently with my colleagues, just to kind of give you a grounding as to what answers is, if you haven't heard of it and where it sits in Viva Engage and what it's used for. Then um, I will break out the demo. 
And because uh, I'm going to go quickly, I'm going to show you some sneak peeks, which uh, one of which I haven't shown anyone yet, which I'm quite excited by. As always, when I present, please interrupt. Don't feel like you're interrupting. Ask questions, put them in the chat, um, come off camera and ask me as well. Craig, thank you. I'm going to look up Baking Impossible as well. Awesome. I will share my screen and maybe it will work. There we go. And has that not come up quite yet? And it's. There we go. Okay, we have it. Now. We're working. Hmm? So I don't think I need to tell anyone on the call what Viva Engage is, but for those of you who are maybe not as quite as familiar, I can't imagine anyone coming to one of Kirsty's events isn't isn't super familiar. But it's all about connecting people and our goal to become the most widely used employee communications platform in the world. One of the biggest changes over the past sort of five, six years is where it used to be IT that owned Yammer back in the day. Uh, it tends to be internal communications that actually takes main ownership of Viva Engage. And as a result, we've built out new capabilities to empower leaders. And of course, those communicators actually do all the hard work behind them, enabling to scale their impact, whether it's through storyline, whether it's through communities. But of course, all those things that were always great about Yammer are still great in Viva Engage, whether it's connecting people across the company so that you meet the person doing the same job as you, but in around in another country, around the other side of the world, where we stop learn, you know, we we don't repeat the wheel, reinvent the wheel. And of course, always to share knowledge, to answer each other's questions, importantly for this session, um, and also to come up with new ideas together as well. So where does answers in Viva sit? And this is really on that kind of knowledge, communities, innovation kind of section on that. Because we spend a lot of time at work seeking the right, we put knowledge in our slides, but I think at first it's information. It only becomes knowledge once we start talking about it. But if we don't know where to go or who to ask, we end up sending loads of emails. We have a reply to all one of those awful email trees or a Teams chat. And then, you know, you invite some more people in. Some people remember to add to uh, include people with the history. Then you find some people didn't get the history. And when finally people reach experts, they just get inundated with the same question over and over again. And of course, that information, while we have some kind of static knowledge in companies, a lot of that is tacit knowledge. It comes from what we're doing and the results of that. So knowledge is always changing. And in the era of co-pilot and AI, we want to also know that we can trust the knowledge that we have. It needs to be accurate, up to date. And what a lot of people want is it to be verified by actual people, as opposed to just technology popping an answer in front of you and you wondering, is that accurate? I, and, and, and how can I check if I don't know? And of course, being Microsoft, we want this to be accessible in the flow of work, the same way that Viva Engage appears in Teams, in Outlook, in Viva Connections, uh, in SharePoint Web Parts, and the Viva Engage mobile app, uh, desk, uh, web app, um, and personal web apps as well. We want to meet people where they are, so that it's not you having to go to Viva Engage to ask your question, unless that's exactly where you want to. And so Answers is about 14 months old now. It's a very new capability of Viva Engage, and it lets you ask a question, and as soon as you do, it starts to look for all the questions that have been asked, are already previously asked in the system. It's using an LLM-backed related question system, so it's using, it's analyzing the text and making sure that it's going to serve up what has already been given as a question. Um, and then it's going to update people, whether you've asked that question or whether you've been involved in the conversation, and it's going to ask the person who asked the original question, to when they get an answer that they like, to market best answer as well. And answers when it first came out was a bit admittedly limited. It existed in a separate tab in Viva Engage. But one of the things we heard all throughout last summer and into the fall was, well, there were two things really. The first, which I'll address now is, we really want this in communities. Our community admins, don't want to answer the same question over and over again. It takes up a significant chunk of their time. So how can we help make that easier for them? And so the first thing we've done is brought answers into communities in Viva Engage, which um, immediately, if you have licenses for answers, and this is included with along with all the other new capabilities of Viva Engage, like Leadership Corner, Campaigns, Advanced Analytics, um, ask me anything. These are part of Viva licenses for Viva Engage. 
And rather than me just kind of tell you about a slide, I will, I'm going to jump between slides and screens. Hopefully this will work okay. I am going to jump and show you some of these. <clears throat> so here I'm in a community. I'm going to go to my co-pilot adoption community. And I know that this is super busy. Like people are excited about Copilot. We set up a dynamic group behind the scenes. So everyone with a Copilot license automatically gets added to this community as well. And I know that I have a question. You'll see that we've got some engagement in here. We've got a few questions. Uh, we've got a new article for those of you who haven't seen these. This is the new long form posting capability in Viva Engage where you can embed photos and videos. Uh, we've got a GIF running here in the flow of your text. So I'll just jump back to here. Say I want to know about um, Copilot for Excel. How do I start to learn about how do I using it? So if I go like where, I need a question type, of course. And of course you can set your community to default to a question type, but where do I go to learn more about Copilot in Excel? And you'll see this is answers working behind the scenes here. Um, and it's looking for looking, you know, parsing the text here for related questions. Um, these are, can come from anywhere within the answers data set, which means it could be from the answers tab or other communities that you're a member of. And what we will be having very soon is the community that you're in, the, the answers will be at the top of the feed. But here we go. I can see, uh, say, um, <laughs> excuse me. Say can, I ask, is a, Todd, can I yeah, ask, please. is this the new co-pilot adoption onboarding um, kit that's kind of come out recently to be able to help? <clears throat> but no, the... This is the one I made myself that oh, okay. uh, did okay. help inspire that for sure. Ah, so I okay. can answer I'll tell that everyone question about it at the end of this. It. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure. <deals>. Yeah. <clears throat> This is like the, the basic version, but this has answers in here. Um, say, Kirsty, say you're the community admin, uh, you're the subject matter expert for Copilot and Excel. You've been asked this question 30 times over the past month. Now all you had to do was answer it once, and every user can go in and start clicking through, uh, and they're going to come to this same answer. And we're actually seeing that um, at, our, at our customers where there's a lot of question and answer activity, these related questions are coming up sort of 50% of the time where people are clicking on them. So that's half the number of questions that your community admins are having to answer than before because it's being automated like this. Now, maybe I'll just take a pause and see if anyone has any questions about answers and answers in communities. So I'm just trying to bring you all up as well as my screen. No questions. OK. The next part of this is the second thing we heard is we need it to be easier to get content into Viva Engage, the question and answer type, into the, the kind of answers part of it. Um, it's great, but I'm having to go in and do it all question at a time, which is time consuming. Um, and, you know, to be honest, gets a bit annoying. And that is why we've also built the Answers Intelligent Importer. What this lets you do is upload documents and um, it works best on unstructured documents. So you can think of you could pull like a, a spec or uh, a paper or an essay or anything like that, or even an FAQ that you already have. It's using LLM technology, same way Copilot does, and it scans through everything and it pulls out every question and answer pair that it can find. I am going to hope that my demo works really well when I do it live, but here I've got a PDF. You'll see it's a whole bunch of text about Copilot for Microsoft 365, and I'm going to leave this to work for a sec. Um, <coughs> And what it's doing right now is it's starting to pull all the different questions and answers that it could find in the document. And when it brings the results, it's going to allow me to choose whether to I can preview, I can edit, or I can delete. And then I can go through all the questions as well and choose to post them all into Viva Engage or just some of them as well. So maybe when I give this just a little pause to work. Uh, and normally it would be while I do a demo, it's going slowly. 
Let me ask, answer the question here. So Amit, please can you clarify whether answers only surfaces questions from the community? So right, answers surfaces questions and answers from every source that you have access to. So that means every community that is public and every community that is private that you have um, uh, you've been invited into, that you've joined. What the related questions will do is surface the questions that appear from the community that you're in first before it pulls elsewhere. So if you think we're building a network of questions and answers and the people behind those, of course, across the community. Um, maybe you could explain, um, could it surface a cleansed answer from another community? What what do you mean by that? So as you said that uh, it's going to surface questions previously from the communities that you are a part of and then figure out questions from another community. But in another community, the question might be asked in a different context and the answer may not be appropriate to be surfaced for everybody. So give me a gist of all the, you know, the content or the context in question uh, and not specifically all the details that I may not need. For sure, it's still going to surface it. It will come further down because it's from a different community because I mean, there's two things. One is it's not going to know the context as clearly as a, as a person would. Uh, and then the second one is there's still some value from even if I'm in the IT community and it pulls up an answer from the HR, Ask HR community, there might be some serendipity that would happen from having those chance connections as well. <clears throat> for those of us who have been in, yeah, you know, I know that a lot of you on the call have been in the Yammer space for years, and it's one of the things we'd always, you know, use it to sell the idea of Yammer into the organizations we've worked and consulted with. So yes, um, but feedback like that is super important for us to hear. Um, Olivia, I'll just take your question. Answers, so, Answers requires the Viva Suite license or the Viva commun uh, Communications and Communities license. Then there are two service plans that you have to apply. There's Viva Engage Communications and Communities service plan and also the Viva Engage Knowledge service plan. We're actually beginning to work to remove the Viva Engage Knowledge plan going forward for new customers but we had to have them both so we could also give Viva Topics customers access to answers um, before the recent changes. So you do need the two, one of the two Viva licenses um, in order to get answers in Viva Engage. <clears throat> um, and then the results. So the importer has looked through the document and as you'll see, we can, we can go preview the question and I'd be like, is that what I'm looking for? I might want to edit it. That looks good, that one I like. Um, this one, I actually want to go in and edit. Uh, I can edit the question, I can add more details, I can edit the response as well. And you'll notice that uh, as well, that each answer is marked best answer as well. Um, and I can delete them, say I, I don't, you know, this isn't quite right, I don't want this one in there, I can delete it. And then I can choose whether to post all the selected questions or just, you know, for this one, I'm just going to post the first one so I show you how it turns up in the feed. Um, so we go back into post and, oh, it's because I already had a question in there, let's remove that. But you'll see down, there's the question that we just posted. Uh, we just chose the one from the document, but imagine you could add 20, 30 at a time and it even refers back to the document where the source is from and of course this is stored in um of a, in a sharepoint site as well i'll just take a pause and wonder if anyone has any questions about importer or answers in communities or maybe you will watch the webinar so i'm actually this is secondhand uh, this is old news for you all so the pointing back to the SharePoint document, is that from the loading in because you've connected it and it's yes. joining back to it? That's right. We want to show some provenance um, and I'll show you why that gets even more important when I show you uh, about where we're going with um, answers content in Copilot as well. What if you don't want to have that original source because you've done some updates to the content when yep. you've imported it in? Can you remove the connection? Yes, you can delete the file. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. 
just just for everyone else, I mean, I've played around with it plenty, but I know that they're yes. questions that have come up for me a whole heap. For sure, for sure. And of course, once you've done all of this, you then have access to all the analytics as well. So Answers has some nice detailed analytics. Uh, first of all, you get a personal piece of feedback. So um, what we've heard is a, a number of customers are they're asking their employees to bring something like this or this to their performance reviews, especially as a lot of us have performance reviews, which are all about how you have helped others in your organization these days. So I can share how many people I've helped, you know, what are the top questions I answered? I'm going to do this one first because I provided that help. But also, what are the top questions that I asked? Because I was saying it's a bit like when we were all back in school and you're in the classroom and everyone has the same question in their head, but only one person ends up putting up their hand and asking that question. And everyone goes, oh, yeah, you know, I had that question, too. Thank you for asking it. And so we want to kind of recognize people for answering questions as much as asking them, sorry, asking the questions that are important to others as much as um, answering them as well. And of course, as an admin, you get access to the global analytics. We have a calculation, it, it, it's a rough calculation that every question answered and asked saves people an average of 15 minutes by reducing the time spent searching and gathering information. So that's me, you know, going through email, maybe still going on the phone, but in Teams chat, pinging everyone, trying to find that help I need, or in an endless search, um, using SharePoint search, being at work, those kind of things. And the time taken that it interrupts the, sub the person who actually knows the answer to stop what they're doing, get pulled into the conversation and go and answer as well. Now, if we automate that in a related question, just once, then they're not getting asked that over and over again. And your organization is saving time that people can use on other things. And we want to give some data for all of you who run these networks to report back to leadership about the impact of your work by deploying tools like Viva Engage with Answers. We also give a breakdown. So if you want to look at, you know, how many, what's the percentage of our questions that are getting answers? What's the median time to the first response? What's the median time to the best answer being marked? Uh, and also again, useful information, whether it's for learning and development or communications to be, what are people asking about? Maybe it's just something that's getting a lot of upvotes like this one, what opportunities are available for career growth? That's super useful information to know that we have a great career system and no one seems to know about it. We need to do a campaign about it. We need to get people sharing their career stories using a Viva Engage campaign, perhaps, or Amplify. Um, or maybe it's something like this, where there's actually 22 different answers, because maybe there's more than one answer that's correct in the organization, and people are just a bit confused and need some clarification. So useful data to get as well. And then what I'm going to jump on, uh, just going to stop sharing this and bring up my slides I again. I find it's also really good for champs and being able to do some measurement competition and, and bring that over to your yeah. champs platform around. Are they answering questions? Show us what you've been doing. Share with the team, you know, your progress across, you know, your answers. <clears throat> Without a doubt, it, it's highlighting your knowledge champions, your subject matter experts, and of course, those ones that maybe don't get picked up by regular performance systems. Um, and they're, we're actually surfacing those hidden stars in the organization. Um, and, you know, just to show you, this is uh, some recent data. Um, it, this number has actually gone up since this slide, I realized a few weeks ago, but 45% of questions are answered through related questions. I think it's up to about 50 now. Um, in our customers, the first question is answered. Uh, question is first answered within three to 10 hours. Uh, and we wanted to share our own data because Microsoft, um, for those of you who maybe don't know, didn't use Yammer. They, they lots of hundreds or tens of thousands of people used Yammer, but it wasn't a central tool for the whole organization, even though everyone had access. But since we started with tools like Answers and Leadership Corner um, and Advanced Analytics Campaigns, AMAs, um, we're getting a lot of, it, it, it's being run fully uh, with huge value at Microsoft. And you'll see that 
our questions are first getting answered within five hours and over half this number has gone up again of being answered through related questions. So that makes all our subject matter experts really happy because they can spend their time on those things that get them excited, which are those questions that maybe there isn't an apparent first answer. They're a bit more gnarly, they're a bit more sticky, um, rather than just having to say, well, how do I get my printer set up? Or, you know, those more kind of uh, repeatable questions. And now, you know, why is all this important? Why do we want, it's great having questions and answers it's great having them in Viva engage with this network of everyone across an organization. And it's great having some of it now automated with related answers or related questions rather. But also it's not just, if you think of its answers in Viva because it's also sitting behind more pieces of Microsoft 365 and Viva and will slowly be bringing them in. The first of these, and this is GAing at any minute, is answers in Microsoft Search. So in Bing at work, office.com, sharepoint.com. If you type in a question, and if there is a related question in answers, it will surface. And I apologize, we're probably all looking at screens at home, so this is quite a small slide. But this is one of our questions that has surfaced um, on the bottom left-hand square. The highlighted area just on the right hand side is if you don't find the answer you're looking for, then we're actually going to surface, uh, we're actually going to recommend that people go and post that question in answers. And of course, we'll have ways to get uh, subject matter experts and others to engage with it. So first of all, answers coming outside of just Viva Engage into Microsoft Search. And now, um, I'll just go on to the next slide. Also bringing answers content into Copilot. We've seen all these warnings. If we've used Copilot, if we've used ChatGPT or any of the other LLM based AI tools that we get these warnings saying you better you got to check it. You know, it, it, it's super useful at saving you loads of time, but it might be incorrect. So just, you know, be careful when you're sending it. And so answers as a content source for Microsoft 365 Copilot um, is one of the pieces that we're working on. And this is coming um, pretty soon. And this is what I'm going to show you live. You'll be the first customers, partners to see it. Um, but this is where we're first going with it. So type a question in a Copilot, it will give you an extended answer and those cited sources. So those of you who are familiar with Copilot, you get the little numbers like a citation in a, in a journal article. That will include answers content. What we're working on next is the ability to use answers to verify Copilot content as well. So if you type in, you know, Copilot, you spend a little while on your prompt, you're asking it to give you detailed information on the topic that you're interested in, but you have a, you're not quite sure it's accurate. Maybe we want to loop it back. Uh, Kirsty, maybe you're the subject matter expert. We want to make sure that you validate it. Maybe it's something important. Maybe you're in a bank. Uh, maybe it's an HR question. And you've set up your co-pilot. You've got your prompting super accurate. Your co-pilot studio, you've made sure that you've uh, prompted as best you can, pointing at the data sources. but People still want to have that confidence that comes with a person saying, yes, that's correct. And that is what we're working on. So answers can be that system so that Kirsty can respond when I say, here's my question. This is what Copilot get, got me. Is this accurate? Any questions about answers content appearing in search or uh, the Copilot connections? OK. I'm going to show you two other areas that we're working on. And all of these pieces that I'm showing you, if you have thoughts, ideas, opinions, we would love to hear from them. If your company is using answers or thinking of using answers, we would love to get our product managers in front of you to get feedback. There are two ways we're going um, because 
as I said, there were questions we always heard at the beginning of using Answers. Or big, when we launched Answers, the first was, why is it not in communities? It's now in communities. The second was getting content in. We have Importer, and hopefully by the end of this calendar year, we'll have a Microsoft Graph API connectors as well. But we also hear that we need some differentiating level. We, we need experts to know that there are questions. And we don't want experts to be community admins. We need somewhere where they can be recognized um, and they can engage and have a few extra powers, um, especially within communities, to be those experts. Like we have them now, but this is good to elevate them just slightly. And you'll see again, apologies if this is small on your home screens. Um, the first uh, highlight in the top right is below uh, members and admins is community experts. And you will be able to go and choose and identify who are the subject matter experts in your community. They will have a little mark to let people know that those are those experts, similar way that there are official communities as well. This will help bring increased visibility to them um, and also, you know, it, it to kind of elevate this community expert role. Then we have to do a couple more things. This is not finally decided upon, which is why the, the mock writing is there, but they will be able to pin a conversation and they will be able to override, they'll be able to mark best answer and override other best answers as well. So we're giving people that these experts we're, we're elevating them. We'll work out ways of recognizing them as well, um, giving them more visibility and giving them a few more powers to make sure that the knowledge in the communities that they're the experts is correct. How are they gonna do that? That is where we're thinking along the lines of verified answers. So uh, again, in similar ways, you'll see uh, on the, the image that's behind the, the front one, um, Kirsten has responded to Daisy's question, and you'll see that it says verified by community expert. This means that the subject matter expert has this level of authority to say that this is the correct answer for the organization at this time, which means that we're going to ensure credibility, as the, the bullets say, of answers content, because the HR business partner is answering HR questions. IT uh, security are answering questions in the digital workplace community. Um, we're going to reduce risk because uh, employees won't be relying on inaccurate and outdated answers. And it will it, it, it just brings another level of trust. Like Viva Engage Networks, they really bloom when everyone feels a level of trust in the network. And this is just another way of helping people feel safe, that things are accurate, and that, um, that there'll be value from the answers that people give. But maybe I'll take a pause. How does, how does bringing answers content into Copilot, uh, community experts and verified answers, how does that sound to you all on the call? Anyone got any thoughts? <clears throat> Feel free to raise your hand. I know that at MVPs, we were pulling this apart a bit uh, with the yep. team, trying to work out, you know, what was the best wording to use in terms of verified, what makes a community expert, who gets to decide who the community expert actually is and who has that yeah. power. It's probably a good one, you know, who has the power to decide <laughs> who those community experts are? Maybe um, that might help. Right now, it's the community admins. We've just our thinking is if you're setting up a community and you have the authority to delete that community, um, it, it's your responsibility. So it makes sense that the, those admins, which uh, shouldn't be uh, like numerous for every community, but of course more than one or two, um, they should know. They should know their communities so they know who the experts are. Because what this also does is we have our, our experts by the org chart, but also in communities, of course, you have those people who are super knowledgeable 
that maybe don't have that explicit role or that's not their job title. And we want to give the option that people can identify those experts as well and bring them into the fold in their community. Well, maybe I will show, and this is really, I have not demoed this yet. Um, I am going to see if it's going to work. So if you could do a kind of drum roll, and oh, my screen's going funny tonight. I should have restarted before <laughs> I started. But Stop uh, if you can do a kind of drum roll in your head, this is, I am in uh, my co-pilot in Teams. I just uh, minimize everyone, just, just to prove it's my Teams. For those of you who know Steve and Allison, this is my Teams. And I am going to ask you a relatively simple question, but is it answers in Viva or Viva answers? And I'm going to leave Copilot to think. As I said, I have not done this yet. Uh, I, I only did it, it, it only started for us this morning to be able to use it. So you are the first to see it. Searching so the, through everything. The, answers, the, Q and the, the whole you know, answer side of thing flowing through into Copilot into SharePoint if you're you're asking the question and is it flowing right up into search those sorts of things I know come up as questions that's right and here we are um the correct name is answers in Viva it's given me some text and the first result uh if I click through this is a Viva engage so it's from answers it's a Q&A post I'm going to click through because I want to make sure this is right and here I am going into and showing behind the scenes of Microsoft Viva Engage. <clears throat> here is uh, Corey in uh, Ohio, and he was asking last summer, is it answers in Viva or Viva answers? I gave the response, and now this content is being part of Copilot's results as well, which I think is pretty cool because it actually has, oh, it has I guess this one has my name attached to it. Um, but uh, it, it makes for a powerful way of having verified, trustable content um, in addition to everything else that's kind of amazing that Copilot can do. Love it. Hi, James. I've got to say, I've, Thank you. I was going to say, I've never Mitch. been on a call with uh, Australia where everyone has been so quiet. Is it too early? <laughs> no, it's clearly, Amit, you had something? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to check, James, from a community owner perspective, uh, what kind of reports can be generated so that we can get an insights on uh, who is the main contributor in terms of content matter expertise or uh, who's asking more questions, like all those KRAs um, that help define a community better? And so there's not much right now. Um, community analytics are what's coming next to the, all the new analytics in Viva Engage. So that's the, the things like um, uh, network level analytics, audience analytics, the, the ones that include theming and sentiment and summarization and stuff. Community is what's being worked on right now. And there'll be a lot of detail on question askers, who are the most the people answering the most. There's a really basic kind of Q&A analytics for a community right now when you click on about in the tab at the top of a community. Mm -hmm. um, but admittedly, it's limited right now, but um, the, it, it is being worked on. We see for all of the building the new communications capabilities that have proven so popular, we're really coming back to a lot of work on knowledge and communities as well. So analytics will follow for those. All right, thank you for that. The one thing I will say that we're seeing is the that adoption score that we had sort of through Power BI and, you know, floating up from our back end reporting. There's been sort of more and more sort of shearing away and going over into the, you know, the Viva Insight sort of analytics side of things or within the app instead. So we're kind of having to go here, here, here. And we're seeing that happening more and more. So I expect to see that it becomes a little bit more fragmented for us as uh, adoption specialists. So if we've got to kind of go here and then we've got to kind of go here and um, it's going to just be the way that it is now. So it's going to be a little harder to keep a track of. I, I will say that. 
Yes, I, and I understand that. And I remember in the past having to download CSVs and um, mm. doing all that number crunching from all the different apps, but especially Engage. Um, we are working on integrations with um, Viva Glint because there's a powerful correlation, of course, never causation between uh, employee engagement scores and interactivity in a tool like Engage. In fact, maybe I'll just jump back into uh, one of my demos here uh, and show you the new network retention score, which we uh, released. I think it went GA yesterday uh, or um, no, it, was, it was last week. So it's rolling out right now along with Viva Engage Copilot. Um, so let me just show you that as well. So the uh, employee retention metric, um, I'm going to be really clear, doesn't claim any kind of causation. It is designed to help those of you running Viva Engage Network show that there is an impact and correlation between those who use Viva Engage and value to the organization. And what the data is showing us in a lot of organizations is there is a strong correlation between those who use Viva Engage and those who stick around longest in your organization. And it makes sense because if you're engaged, you're going to be engaging, it's a bit of a mouthful, but with <laughs> other people in the organization. If uh, you have high engagement as a leader, you're going to stick around your organization more. So we're thinking of ways as to how can we help you demonstrate value in the work that you do because you know i've sat in a lot of your roles it tends to be a small team of one maybe a few more that do run a lot of these tools and in the engage point how can we help you show just the value that's coming from engage and your work as well um similarly we have you know the it's not going to let me scroll down i don't know what is going on with my demos today i apologize to everyone i'm not able to scroll um, but we have sentiment analysis uh, themes being pulled out of the content and summarization of what's going on in those themes as well um, which helps you identify conversations that you might want to bring to your leader's attention if you're in communications conversations that you might want to join in with or to uh, amplify across the organization because they're sharing stories <coughs> that uh, you may not have found just by scrolling through Viva Engage and you want to surface for the organization. So I know this isn't answers stuff here, but answers rolls up to the value that Engage provides your organization. And that's why I just wanted to share some of the ways that we're trying to help you with the analytics there to help show that you're listening, uh, that leadership are listening in your organization and able to demonstrate some of the impact that uh, having a well-run Viva Engage network is having for the organization. Great. Thanks very much, James. Unless we've got any other questions, we'll um, let him go. It'd be a little late there now for you, wouldn't it? Uh, it's um, quarter to eight. It's not too bad. I appreciate you giving up your evening. That's okay. Thank you for giving me the time. Everyone had a, have a good rest of your day. Fabulous. And look, if there's any questions, they'll come up in um, they'll come up in chat and you should still be Please. able to see them for a little bit anyway. I'll pass on. And if you've got a, um, uh, your presentation that you're willing to provide, I'll put it in as a link in ours. That sounds good. And I just put my email in here. If anyone wants to reach out for anything Viva Engage, please, uh, any questions you have, please feel free. Teams is better than email, uh, which uh, my inbox tends to be so full. I, I, I might miss you, but Teams I won't. Okay. Everyone take care. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye, Joves. Bye. Hi. Okay, let's bring the presentation back up again. Start sharing. Okay. We should all be able to see the screen again. I'll turn the turn everything back on in terms of noise. Right. Are we ready? <coughs> Strap on in. Let's have a look at 
what's new in the adoption space and what's new in 365. So the wheel is still out there. There's been no changes yet. I will tell you if there are any changes um, coming forward. Don't forget you can go to the aka.ms slash M365 adoption YouTube channel for the recording if you need to come back to it. We now have 156 videos answering questions for the community. Um, more is going to be coming out. There's always a ton of information in there. Please feel free to pass on any questions that you might actually have for us um, and we can answer it for you in, um, in the future. The champs calls that have gone out there, the April is now live. You can go and watch the video and you can download the presentation. They always do a little bit about what's new in there as well. So the latest is in there. The next call is coming up on May 28. They do run it over two time zones. So it actually makes for a little better for us in Australia. Um, if you are joining from overseas, it'll probably be a little easier for you. Now, the release notes, there's always heaps that's been happening across 365 in the adoption side of things there. Um, I do like that we're getting more traction in this space. So information is all kind of coming together into one spot for us. It does make for a bigger and bigger environment, though. So what's actually new? Now, in the past, I have provided the links for this um, co-pilot discovery sessions. There are three that are actually running. The first two, we had the video to be able to watch it again and also to come back and see the um, um, see the presentations. The third one is now live. So feel free to go back in and have a look at that recording. Uh, so I've got some great, great content on there around adoption and how to. The latest is there's some new day in the life of guides for the new planner. There are two that have actually come out, managing projects for your team and managing the daily tasks. This is about kind of half. They're quite a long sort of day in the life of. Um, rather fancy, they are PDF, so um, they're not a PowerPoint for you to be able to edit and adjust. Okay. There is an FAQs out now around Microsoft Planner. The good part about this and what I like is, one, if you are using Ansys, for example, you'll be able to load that PDF into your community and or you could take those Q&As and load them up onto a SharePoint site around Planner for your organisation. So if you've got a FAQs page. Microsoft have put out now and collated together a page around, you know, how does Microsoft actually do it? Now, there's some interesting um, information and stories that are actually available on this site. I would go in and have a look at their co-pilot story. So I do like some of the information that's in there. Um, I would highly recommend as to, you know, well, how do they do it? And then the four chapters. It's a good, it's a good read. So one of those um, and a new feature that's come out is as part of those four chapters. So this one here, the, the four chapters, what I particularly liked on that page, and it is quite a long page, but down towards the bottom, it's got this deployment checklist. Now, a lot of this information is scattered throughout some of the presentations, but it's kind of pulled it all together in one big long list. So you can work your way through and uh, do a bit of a checklist of it. So I do like that blog. Another one, so this is the other one, the deploying co-pilot internally. It has in there some, you know, prompters as to, you know, using co-pilot for 365. I do like some of those prompts that are sitting in there. There's been some new links put in on the training content map. I have put this up previously. It is there as part of the downloads. So the two new ones, it's got the strategy template that's actually available and Copilot, a video around Copilot experiences. So those two new links are coming. Now, um, depending on where you've downloaded content from, sometimes it's actually got the old training content map. So you might not necessarily see it in, so for example, the webinars that has got the PowerPoint in there. It actually has the old uh, PowerPoint deck in there. So it depends on where you're kind of going. This one, the link in here is the latest. You will note that there is the new user enablement specialist that's coming soon. So we had the old original, you know, adoptional specialist um, 
a certification path, the new path is actually coming into play fairly soon. And you will note that it's had that name change, which we were talking about last month with Caruana over to the user enablement specialist. So if you're looking for it in future or you're trying to direct someone to the adoption specialist kind of course, it has changed. Now, in those co-pilot resources for education, so there's a whole new page that's come out around the education side of things. And in there is some rather cool content to be able to download. And um, I do particularly like things like the, the two emails and rolling those two emails out. Now, we don't have those two, you know, getting started kind of, um, countdown emails, the minus two week, the minus one week around Copilot. It is in there for education. You could take content and kind of um, jam it together to create your own countdown. The only emails that are available on the more um, enterprise side of things are, you know, week one, what could you do? Three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a after you've rolled it out. So I've been speaking with the team around, can we get our pre? Um, a lot of the pre is more around teams and rolling out in teams the um what you might put into the channels and or on viva engage or on your sharepoint site it's not so much about email um where they are putting it in here for education okay. but there is some good content in there to have a look at even if you're not on the education side okay um, creating a survey in forms. Now, this one here, we talked about um, Copilot in forms last month in terms of the rolling out. But this one here, what I particularly like is it's actually about the health service. And it's just a kind of a, a bite piece of how they've actually done it. But the reason I like this one is it's actually got a really good prompt in there that's been used around how they created a form using a prompt, the sentiment that they actually wanted to get out of that, that I think it's a nice little guide on how, and of course, if you are in the health space and joining us, fabulous content there for you. Okay. There is now a deployment kit in Viva Amplify. So this is a whole campaign to be able to get yourself ready. It comes with eight pre-drafted publications for you to just be able to push out if you are using Viva Amplify. So, um, and if you're not familiar with Viva Amplify, maybe you want to get your head back around it. We have talked about it in the past where you can do campaigns and it will push it out right across your ecosystem from um, mail to Viva Engage to your SharePoint site to, okay, so it's about sort of amplifying messages across um, the, the different formats and into teams. So all this out-of-the-box content for Copilot we're seeing a ton come out if you're going on the Copilot, you know, route. Copilot Academy is now actually generally available. That Copilot Academy is flowing through into Viva Learning, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into Viva Learning with lots of resources. It pulls those resources from Microsoft Learn and the Copilot Lab. So that's where it comes when we talk about the Academy a little later. So that Academy here, You'll see it has in here in Viva Learning, here is your academy. And as part of that drop down, you can enable it as an administrator, by the way. And that academy will then flow through with all those components that are coming in from Learn and Copilot, the lab, Copilot lab. So if you're wanting to have a look, what is on Viva Learn. I've already done the filtering here for you as part of this particular path. If you go in and you have a look at what's available under Microsoft 365 for business users and your co-pilot, so you can actually then start to see, and you'll see here my filter was co-pilot, but you could just put co-pilot in there. Um, either or, it's going to give you the same content. There is a ton of great content that's now flowing in around Viva Learn is moving really fast. So in that academy, this is what it kind of looks like for you as an administrator. You can go in and actually configure and enable it in the back end as part of your managing academies. That's how you do. So another feature what you were talking about with James not long ago and I was asking him, is this the new co-pilot um, onboarding checklist? He said, no, it was one that he had created itself, but it fed into this. So what's actually happened is Viva Engage have actually built this co-pilot rollout kind of plan to be able to help set you up in Viva Engage. So as part of an adoption community, those 
um, onboarding components actually come in. It gives you banners. It's a one-click community creation. It's got a setup checklist. It's got content that you might like, um, different conversation starters and questions and, you know, members that you might want to bring in. So it's got this whole checklist to walk you through and start to bring certain content in. I really love it. It's rather cool. Okay. Um, Microsoft Teams apps has actually had a bit of an update. So the Emergency Operations Center is now in version three. These are available for you as a part of plug and play these apps. So go in and have a little bit of look. There are others that are actually out there. We've talked in the past about Learning Pathways and the Champs Management Platform. But another one that's fairly new and recent is the company Communicator as an app. So that is a Teams just app plugin that you can enable. The virtual events playbook has had some updates to it. So if you do do um, Viva, uh, sorry, Microsoft Teams events, there is some changes that have come in across and it's listing it out now before, during and after as three core components to be able to help and support you with some um, new content in there in the playbook. Uh, the uh, a new adoption site is called Leading in the Era of AI. Now, some of the information that is on there is older information. Some is more modern information. Uh, I would highly recommend going in. There's all these new pages that are kind of popping up to be able to help and support you. The one thing that I particularly loved on this one, and, you know, talking about it here was coming in around inclusive prompting. So on that inclusive prompting, was and we've talked about good prompts in the past but in here it's taken a little further from what's your goal what's your context what's your source and what's the tone okay now it's actually got a little bit more around how can you write a good prompt so in this underneath this particular you know piece when you go in and you look at that's it, quite you know a, quite a long uh, blog effectively around inclusive prompting and it includes pages as well but these inclusive modifiers words that you can include in your prompt that are particularly of value now I I don't really particularly care if you're looking at inclusivity from a this was sort of a marketing advertising focus um, what I loved about this was the fact that it gives you what are some of those inclusive words that you could put in to even connect or provide balance to a particular prompt. Um, go have a look at them, love it, it was awesome. Microsoft Graft has its own page now under the Microsoft Adoption site. In there, it actually has resources when it comes to security. Um, it's got business and technical, okay? So you've got different resources with links in there around Microsoft Graph. Now, if you're not familiar with what Microsoft Graph is, maybe go in and have a bit of a look and educate yourself on understanding what Microsoft Graph is actually doing in the back end to surface, um, you know, how you might be um, in Outlook and you go to do an attachment, it goes based on some of the words. And if you're doing your slash, it goes, these are the recommended um, <clears throat> attachments that you might not for this particular chat, conversation, email, for example. That all comes from Microsoft Graph Learning in the background. So uh, this has got some good information in there around some of the business resources and things that you might want to be able to work with and the connectors that are available. Um, the Microsoft Advanced Content Management Advocates Initiative. So in here is some of the um, the community information that you might want to go and sort of watch what are the events that are coming up with some great links to be able to do things like, you know, prepare for a co-pilot. Okay. Now, Microsoft Teams Premium have put out some content for you. The main one here is the Getting Started campaign. That email template flowing through, they are rather, and I've put in here one of the one of the docs. It's literally just sort of a Word document with um, just a short, sharp bite on what is Intelligent Meeting Recap that you can then copy and paste and put into an email if you wanted to. Um, it's included the pictures should you should you need them as well and any war marking. So just a just a really short, sharp getting started campaign. 
Viva Glenn, ask the expert session so you can go in, you can register for the next one. The previous ones are available to be able to watch and download. There's also some new adoption resources that have flowed in for Viva Glint to be able to support you. Um, if you're not sure or you're getting started, just go straight first to your adoption guide to be able to get you in and then roll out based on your project template. So new custom backgrounds have come into play. These are all for Earth Month. So we're in the throes of Earth Month. So if you want to put some pretty backgrounds behind you. And on the Insider blog, I would recommend going in and having a look. A lot of content and a lot of the applications don't actually put out on tech community in the blog. And also, even though they're on the insiders, this means it's stuff that's coming. A lot of times they don't roll it over into the, even into Message Center or elsewhere to go, it's actually here. Um, so if you're wanting to have a look, a lot of these are actually available on the insider blog. If you want to read what's what is coming down the line with some um, helpful how to for your staff. Stay up to date with Microsoft OneDrive. There is a newsletter you can go and register to keep yourself up to date. So what's new on coming 2365? There you go. <clears throat> The multi-tenant capabilities coming into play to be able to join tenants together so you can have um, better ways to be able to work. Now, this means that um, once you're in a tenant, you're going to be able to get notifications a little bit easily across the two different um, tenants to be able to ensure that the information is kind of um, a bit more united when it comes to joining it and you're doing your searches. Organizational messages. So you can now do customized organizational messages that will flow through and pop up down the bottom in window. So we'll do this little pop up that it comes down the uh, down the bottom, a little banner to be able to drive it out directly from the admin panel. So rather than an email, okay, it literally does a pop up in the windows to do here's a crafted message for your business. So you can go in, you can craft as part of that, it's going to ask you to do, you know, who is your audience? When do you want to schedule it for? Um, it's got an approval process so that you can do a bit of a review and do org messages that flow out through the whole, you know, operating environment. I'm particularly liking that because it's a way to be able to get to people because we often have um, uh, those that might have a terminal server, for example, and they're in Windows, but they're not necessarily got email accounts, for example. How do you get your messages out to them? Okay. Um, unveiling the newest OneDrive capabilities. So the viewer has had a bit of an update. It has now up to 300 file types for you to be able to view as part of or um, uh, working with OneDrive and the viewer, but that new viewer will go up to two times faster and it's putting in a lot of functionality now as well, part of that. And that functionality, it's got a little video, so you can see here it's just moving a little quicker. So it's, it's speeding up as part of that environment. <clears throat> There is also an updated handling when it comes to documents on iOS and Android. Now, this one was one that I know had kind of frustrated people for a while. When you went and opened up a document in Outlook, it went to the M365 app and it was sort of in a view mode. But if you wanted to then edit it or or anything now, it, you then had to have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and then you do a next one to click over and go over and edit it. Now what it's doing is it's swapping over well, it's actually swapping back. So you kind of wonder, will the 365 app survive or will it go back to the standalone? Because they, they were trying to do the, remove all the standalone apps and just use the 365 app to do all your work and your editing. They're kind of going back again and you need those standalone Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So it's prioritizing those now. So when you open it, we'll jump straight into the individual apps rather than the 365 app, okay? We're going backwards again. <laughs> hey, there's always a reason. Um, the new Copilot in Planner is now available in preview. So there's a little bit of a quick video.
fun, quick video. So that that planner app, you can go now and have a look at the Copilot experience inside planner. If you've got Copilot or you're looking at doing Copilot in planner, but the new planner is out, Copilot is now connecting in to um, planner. There's some of the stuff I've seen across that space is actually rather cool. Okay. There are some new capabilities that are coming in in terms of OneDrive Copilot is driven in now to OneDrive as well. So we're going to see that flow over eventually into SharePoint, of course, but at the moment it's sitting there as part of OneDrive. SharePoint's a little bit more complex to be able to have Copilot in it, um, whereas OneDrive's a simplified environment. I would go and um, have a little bit of a, you know, there's this isn't a particularly long, this one here, sorry, is a particularly um, long video. So I would go watch that itself. It goes for a good nine minutes, but we're not going to do that one today. <clears throat> no. Uh, Viva Engage now has Copilot in it, which we just saw with James. So that's now flowed out and is generally available. Go and have a play. The other features that are new to Copilot is grounded chat in Outlook. We've got um, consuming of Word documents that it's going to work a little bit better across Word doc so that you can go, here's a link to a Word doc within Word. Okay. Um, column formulas in Excel, and then the Copal Academy, which we've already talked about. So the grounding in chat, that actually means that when you go over into the Copilot environment, so inside Outlook, you'll see Copilot is now embedded in so that you can use Copilot inside Outlook through its kind of its own app. It's also available inside emails, but now it's got a, a kind of a higher level. Um, the other thing you're going to find is it's now driven down into classic Outlook as well as Outlook for the web. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting because you kind of go, one of the reasons of going to the new team, new Outlook was, of course, we talked about this before, the fact that they weren't going to bring out Copilot in the old, let alone Loop, and both of those things are now in Classic. <laughs> Why do we go to the new one? Ultimately, there are more features and functionality in the new one than you'll have in the older version, by the way. Okay. There is a, um, a new feature that's come through into Copilot to be able to fine tune. It's now called a rewrite feature to help you out with some additional prompts. OK, so you can say what kind of tone rewrite with a particular tone. Uh, the supported column feature functionality. Now, what's actually happens is um, We've got that single prompt, quick and easy, returning more than one formula. You can return two formula columns simultaneously now and rather complex formulas as well. So these complex formulas allows you to be able to use Copilot to go, I want to do a lookup and I want to do a lookup of blah, 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 and it will handle all these complex um, formulas. I'm, I'm particularly loving that one and you can start to see how that actually works across the two so we'll pull it together and do more complex formulas okay making life so much easier <laughs> giving some of the complex to people that don't know how to necessarily deal with complex formulas and it will just build it based on what you want so Copilot in stream is becoming available. Now, Copilot allows us to be able to do some work such as, you know, summarize this video, um, you know, what questions sort of insights from a particular video, you know, locate where in particular a topic was discussed and any call to action. So this is based on previous content that's already recorded. Um, so the fact that that's flowing into stream, I like because, in, you know, in the past we had a Teams meeting and we were actually recording, you kind of had to be in the meeting to get that as part of a recap. So to see it come flu um, flowing through into stream is um, particularly great. However, you do have to have, you know, certain licenses to be able to support that in terms of stream across OneDrive and SharePoint. The ability to hide the general channel has come into play. So you can see here now go hide for those that uh, don't necessarily use their general channel and they're finding it's just sitting there as noise. It can clean up your teams a bit. Your group chat profile, you can now come in and change it. So you can modify it to make it a picture that actually is going to work a little better for you and your team. 
Now you've got your context-based file attachment. So when you come in now, and this all kind of um, that context-based is all kind of part of the graph as well. What it will do now, it will actually surface five of the most relevant documents for you based on what you're talking about in that chat. You're going to see a bit of that flowing through as well. We'll talk about it when you do your, by the way, when you do your slash as well, that slash is flowing through as a bit of a, uh, like a shortcut. Um, voice isolation. So now you can come in and as part of your microphone, you can go in and just double check and make sure to eliminate some of those backgrounds. So instead of it just automatically sort of being there, you can turn these things on and off. There is a more simplified team creation so that when you go in and you go to create now, in the past you'd have all those kind of um, templates and things sort of, you know, flowing in. Now it's actually making it a little simpler so that you can just go and if you want to choose more options to go to the template library. So the template library um, is not coming up to start with. It's there as a extra option if you want to go to the to the templates, okay? So it's just got a more simple interface. I particularly like those templates being there, but it can be confusing for some. Um, they're creating channels. So they're trying to simplify across the space. Now they're creating with creating channels. Instead of it going to the ellipsis inside the team to go create the channel. Now when you're up the top on the plus button, if you go to create a team, it's got the create a channel button there because what they want to try and do is go, do you really want to create a team? Are you better to create a channel? In, rather than a team and you know it might actually work a little better okay you can now sign in with multiple accounts at the same time across various clouds and sort of tenants now i do and don't like some of this the one of the downsides of staying signed in in multiple tenants inside teams so if you're crossing over in between the two, those real-time notifications, and I've been getting them for a while, are great up until I'm in another tenant to present, and then I'm getting notifications flowing through from another client in my current client environment, and I'm presenting up on the screen. So um, some of that can be frustrating for me, but I know that inside a business, when you're not doing kind of partner type stuff like me, um, really valuable. But for those of us that are out there that are living across um, a gazillion <laughs> environments, sometimes it could be great, sometimes not so great. Okay. Um, calendar notifications in Teams is having a little bit of an update. So now you can actually manage your calendar notifications a little bit more easily and they will flow through into your activity feed for you without you having to leave the flow of that work. So you can see some of those meeting details in your activity feed. There is some improved live translations and um, captions going on in terms of town hall. Now it actually is supporting up to six languages as part of your town halls. Now, of course, if you've got a Teams premium license, it will give you 10 languages. So it is a little bit more depending on what license you actually have. There is a new activity notification that's actually flowing in for Q&A. So if there is a new question, it will give you the little you know, red dot to say there is something new that's actually been posted to be able to help and support you. In the, and it will persist until you've actually gone in and opened up Q&A. Outlook. Okay, so across Outlook and Teams, there is a new feature to be able to respond to meetings. Instead of just your standard yes, no, maybe, you can actually go yes, no, and flowing in is follow. So this allows you to effectively kind of um, decline the meeting in some respects, but still be able to follow it. You will, as an organiser, get a notification that someone is actually following this meeting. And when you get into the meeting, Teams will also give you a notification to say these people are following the meeting. So that means that they're going to be able to, one, have their calendar free up time. So it will still put it into the calendar, but it will mark it as free. So even though they're not 
actually go into the meeting. It's good like for senior leaders to go, I'm not coming to this, but I want to still follow it. It means that they get the meeting recaps and notes and recording and information to be able to come back. This all flows in um, quite well to be able to help and support, especially when it comes to um, Teams Premium and recaps, those sorts of things, and Copilot. And so it's it's uh, flowing. And this is part of that new Team, new Outlook environment and Outlook for the web. So it's not actually there in Classic. So this is one of the reasons of why you might go to the new Outlook. This is a new feature. If you're in Teams, um, if you're in Outlook Classic, it won't come up as follow. It'll just come up as tentative, okay, just so that you're aware. That's how it just flows through. It just flows through straight as tentative. Now, the recording greeting button is having a bit of a change in its settings. So in the past, when you click the recording greeting button, it would go online and it would give you kind of a lot of content, including recording the greeting. That's actually changing. It's going straight to recording a greeting now. So it's less steps for you to kind of work with. Some of the features coming to Teams are recordings now by default will actually sit in the organizer's OneDrive by default. One of the downsides in the past was that if you go, I want to auto automatically record the meeting, whoever started the meeting first, the recording automatically went into their OneDrive. Whereas now it's the moment it kicks off the recording, it will go into the organizer's OneDrive. One of the downsides of that is if you are a delegate and you're the one that's actually kicking off the meeting, yet it's come from a senior leader, it is going to the, go into the senior leader's OneDrive if it's come from their calendar. So if you need to deal with that recording, you're going to need to go through them to get permissions to it. Okay. Another one is it's a new feature that's coming in as part of policies to be able to turn on explicit transcription consent. Um, so the consent means that everyone in the meeting has to consent to the recording for it to be able to kick off a transcript. So this is an explicit consent of saying yes. So that's a new feature that's coming in that can be turned on as a policy. Okay? Um, some education piece might need to come into play around that one. Otherwise, it's not going to do a transcript. Um, it's not going to flow through into recap, for example, and you're going to have other stuff that might come from Teams Premium. I'm creating avatars for your photos. So from your photo, now this is a little bit of a, a Microsoft Mesh feature. So if you haven't got sort of Mesh turned on, um, it does flow through to be able to allow you to upload a photo so that it can do um, automatic generation of an avatar for you. There are some minimum requirements when it comes to the type of device that you have, let alone the um, um, license that you need, but you can create for photo. Another one is for public webinars. So if you are doing webinars and they are set as public, you can actually disable that social sharing. So when you're registered, it often gives you that button to go share with your, you know, your kind of the community public share where it might go share to Twitter or share to LinkedIn or share to. You can actually disable that option so you don't allow that sharing to social media. Disabling the email attendees for town halls. Sometimes you want to create town halls or webinars and those town hall or webinars um, automatically send the email out. You might want to just be taking the link and putting it somewhere, for example, and you don't want it to generate that email to push out as part of that, um, that registration kind of piece, uh, especially if you're doing sort of third party platform type stuff. So now you can actually toggle it off to be able to turn it off. Um, another feature is the with the merging and kind of that connection of Microsoft Teams from the old version to the new version and that public consumer uh, version of Teams, so the consumer side of things. It used to be, do you want to go into Microsoft Teams work or school when you maybe tapped on your Windows key and asked for Teams? It had kind of the different versions. Now it's just going to be renamed to Microsoft Teams, okay? Now the personal application will actually sit there for a while, but it is eventually going to be renamed because it was called Microsoft Teams Personal. It's going to have a dash in it and have a bit of a name change if they're being used still on devices, okay? Teams is also giving us shorter meeting URLs. 
fabulous. If you do still have a long URL, it will still will work. It um, won't actually change. Good part is, like, for example, you know, it's very frustrating for me. The URL is particularly long when I go and put it into made up for this meeting. Really, really long. So it's trying to shorten it right down. So moving forward, I'm not going to recreate the meeting invite because we've been using this one for a while. So don't stress. Um, another feature is, remember I talked about this before, to be able to use the slash commands in the compose box to be able to get things like, um, you know, uh, different components that we've been using now across uh, Copilot and um, our keyboard shortcuts. They have now flowed into the compose message box to be able to use in Microsoft Teams. There are a couple that might actually help you. Things like, you know, I want to do a loop, I want to do code, I want to do. So there are some good ones in there to be able to help and support. So they are flowing through into the compose box. Um, the new Microsoft Teams is now available on the web across Firefox, Safari, and Linux. So if you're wanting to have a little bit of a, you know, look at that, it's now it is supported where it was having some real issues before. So sometimes organizations say that you have to use this because of other legacy applications, for example. Now, when it comes to um, collaborative annotation, so if I kick off annotations for this meeting, so if I went up to the top and I said, I want to annotate, then in the past, it had some issues around doing annotation. Now you've got a new feature where it will actually help to save that meeting content and put that annotation into a whiteboard. So now you can actually capture the annotations and you don't lose the annotations on your screen because sometimes we might bring up a blank page and I'll be doing it with other people where we can all annotate and draw all over the screen. The frustrating part was you couldn't keep that in the past. You couldn't actually save or share it or come back to it later on. It would just kind of drop off. Um, so therefore, I would go and use the likes of OneNote or I'd bring up Whiteboard instead because annotations were only good for a you know, short chart. Um, the other thing is you can um, use your annotations now to be able to move between apps. So when you turn on your applications in the past, if you moved from one screen to another screen or you're doing something with sort of different backgrounds behind it, um, it would drop off and you'd have to do it all over again, turn annotations back on. That's not the case anymore, so it will actually flow through. There has been some um, window enhancements when it comes to your screen sharing. Remember, we had that little tiny kind of pop up down the bottom. So while you're sharing now in Microsoft Teams, the presenter will be able to keep a better track of what's actually going on. It will have this sort of little arrow up down button so you can start to see a little bit more. It's got a longer presenter window. Now, recently was the M365 Collab Com uh, Community Conference that was actually over in Orlando. Um, if you got to go, you're very lucky. Uh, some of us did, some of us didn't. Now, um, Susan Hanley for, for a long time has been putting together a page and grabbing the pages from the What's New. However, the team have learned that she does this, so they pushed out the four pages of all the things of, um, the, of what's been announced at the conference. The conference tends to be a big one that comes out of, you know, what's coming down the line. So you can come in and have a look. Now, when it comes to platform and extensibility, a lot of times I don't dive into, I suppose, a lot of the extensibility side of things. However, on the coming and what's actually going to be new, there are a few things like approvals in lists and libraries that I particularly liked. And then coming... It's not on the coming soon, but it's on their list of to do is things like, you know, working with the, the SharePoint brand center. Um, I also particularly liked some of the integration into Copilot scenario. So if you were managed to watch uh, or be there as part of any of those sessions. There is in terms of the SharePoint roadmap. Now, a lot of this we've already kind of walked at, talked through um, in the past over the, the last couple of months. So this is kind of what's happened in the last sort of quarter or even sometimes a year, but usually it's a quarter when SharePoint sort of talks about this. Um, coming very soon. Now, these are all ones that I'm going to talk through as they actually hit us, of course. Um, you know, being able to do things like trimming videos in SharePoint, 
Okay. Okay. Um, and then, you know, moving forward, it will be some of the more flexible layouts that are, you know, out there or motion and animation effects over in um, Microsoft Stream. So some of this is Stream, some of this is SharePoint. Um, and so, you know, we're going to see some um, great content. And I also really loved one of the things I really love was that video playback directly embedding into the new Outlook so that if you've got a part that's come through from Stream SharePoint, you'll be able to play it live through one Outlook. Okay. Some other roadmap updates around events, content management, if you're working with the likes of SharePoint Premium, um, these are all, I'll, I'll let you have a look at these ones. I won't dive into these ones. Um, another one is OneDrive and Microsoft lists lots of great stuff coming down the line when it comes to OneDrive as well as lists. Um, we're already getting flowing through, I mean, it's it's kind of hitting us now, but those coloured folders in Windows Explorer, these are all things that I've already talked about. Um, the drag and drop reorder in lists and libraries, I like it. So that's actually hitting us. So some of this we're talking about through literally this month. Okay, But other ones to look at in terms of top of mind is that Copilot's coming into lists, which will be driving through in the SharePoint sort of piece. Um, although it is a, is, this is kind of OneDrive, this is more talking about lists. So once we see Copilot come into SharePoint, of course, we're going to see Copilot come into lists down the track. Okay. And being able to embed lists and forms into Teams and Outlook. Ooh, I'm liking that one. <clears throat> okay. So what is new based on some of that? What's coming? Let's have a look. Um, so there's a new brand center that's actually out in preview at the moment with full branding in there. So you can have it with your own colors, looks, feels, what is your brand, brand assets. It's a plug and play SharePoint part um, that then flows also through into Viva Connections and customization of Viva Connections. I think we've got some of that information a little bit later on. So you can change its look and feel. What I particularly like on the custom fonts component that's also coming into play, bringing in your own custom fonts into SharePoint. And where are you going to be able to see? And these are the web parts that it's actually supported in, in terms of those custom fonts and branding. So there is also some new header level options. So this is, we're very used to it in, you know, Microsoft Word, for example, where you can pick and choose the headings as to what you want. Now that is actually flowing through into the web part. So these pre-built um, uh, headings based on your fonts that you've actually chosen on the custom fonts previous page. Another one is some new content alignment when it, on the pages so authors will be able to do a little bit more when it comes to aligning columns on the top center or bottom of a particular section okay so these can be found in some of the properties over on the right hand side as to how they're going to align there is some new video page templates that are coming out. Now, that is going to be available for your SharePoint Online and Microsoft Stream. So these video page, so it's a page template, um, are going to be really great for presenting video, and they are going to be plugging in for both pages as well as for news. Okay, so these video page templates. And hopefully um, we will have, I'll have a blog when I can show you a little bit more as it rolls out. Okay. Now OneDrive add-ins for new offline capabilities. So this is the online version. So if you go to OneDrive on the web, you're going to be notified if you lose your internet connection. Okay. Couple of things that are coming into play. So if you've got um, training content around OneDrive and you're looking at the online, you're going to need to help them just to understand a little bit more around what happens if you don't have an internet connection. So one, you can actually open and interact with files through a browser, by the way. So this is online through a browser for you to be able to work with your files. And what will happen is you can make it so that you can choose a particular file. So there is this new little icon that will come into play 
that you can say that, you can make it always available offline, and you can also see if it's pending any changes. So what will happen is once you've done those adjustments, it will sit there and wait for you to have an internet connection and will load them up, same as what you get with the um, uh, sync client on the desktop. How's that? I'm getting pretty clever these days. So that whole can I work online and offline? Well, yes, you can, and you can do it even through the web browser. Okay. So I like it. I like it. Uh, there are some new filtering and enhancements coming for a OneDrive on the web. Those filters are going to allow you to be able to come in and do some advanced filtering of different file types. For example, you'll be able to filter. There'll be a date filter. There'll be um, different scoping to be able to help you with your searching as part of part of this. And there's a whole kind of a bit of an updated interface to be able to support you. Hmm? There's a little video so you can see. They're going to keep play. Stopped it from playing. So searching. There you go. And you'll see here are the filters as well and all these little drop down filters across the top here love it make life a little easier and um, what i particularly like that is it makes it easier for us to cross fingers not put things in folders <laughs> just get some good metadata some good filtering some good information and we can start to pull some of that uh, <clears throat> okay so uh, branding external file requests so when you send out the secure upload link and it, it drives out there you can now do a custom branding and landing page for your organization that's a new OneDrive capability so you can make it look and feel like your business there is the new OneDrive experience that's actually going on. So when you go to your document libraries, there is a bit of a new refresh, simplified classification. We've already talked about the filtering. Um, you'll now see things like uh, Microsoft lists and boards sort of flowing in. So you can start to see there is some different content coming in. Now, you'll also see there is media as well, which I think I've talk about, I've talked about in the past. So this is flowing through. So these are our kind of Microsoft Teams SharePoints for you to be able to work on lots of different content. Drag and drop, all directly from your OneDrive. Okay, and push play. So this one is creating new files from templates. So the add new button now has templates flowing up into your online environment to be able to support, um, you know, that jumpstart of organizational templates. If you have organizational templates, if you have, you just want to use the Microsoft templates, same as your desktop, no different. Another feature is this media view. Oh, here we go. We were talking about the media view. So you can click on media view and it will bring together all of your media to be able to easily have in one place. So it's all your photo and video content. I, uh, I like that one. Yeah. We're seeing that there for a long time on the consumer side, but um, and we see it where we can have web parts and do that for SharePoint, but we haven't had that for OneDrive. So I do like it. <clears throat> okay. There is a, um, you know, there is a bit of a new experience that's coming to OneDrive. Now we've seen it across sort of the web side of things that is actually flowing right throughout the whole environment from our OneDrive app, whether it's in Teams, whether you're over in Outlook, for example. So if you're in Outlook, you've got the the OneDrive icon over in Outlook. It's all flowing through. Not only that, but it's also going to be in the file picker. So if you go and open up Word, Excel or PowerPoint, for example, it's going to do a bit of an update flowing into there as well. OK, so we're going to see it flowing in everywhere. Colored folders in our Windows File Explorer. I'm really looking forward to that one hitting my desktop. Hasn't quite got there yet, but um, soon, soon. Another one is to be able to annotate PDFs within text boxes. So if you get given a PDF and you get text boxes, you can now go in and as part of the file viewer, edit that, um, edit those, those boxes. Okay, flowing through. 
there is also the ab ability now for Microsoft Loop to be able to do business to business guest sharing for your workspaces and components. Now, this always comes down to the policy gets gets put into place. So this is in the SharePoint kind of admin center when it comes to working with, you know, Loop. If you're, for example, um, maybe you're in a Teams meeting, this is kind of flowing through where, you know, Teams Premium is creating Loop components and you've got action items, for example, or maybe you're doing a chat, that one-on-one -on -one chat with an external party and you want to create a Loop table, you can then do that, you know, collaborative component. Loop has flown in to OneNote. So you've got those unstructured Loop components now dropped in so that you can work both across Loop, Teams, Outlook, and OneNote now. Some of the scenarios to be able to have a look, there are filters in tables and boards now to be able to support you. Okay, so this is in Loop. There is a bit of a new look and feel that's actually flown in in terms of the task lists to be able to support you. You can do one of those in, in terms of the new look and feel is things like row heights. You can now adjust them where it was tough before it was a little difficult. You kind of had to go into it and sort of arrow down to try and see what was in that field. Uh, that's now adjusted so you can adjust the row height. You can also expand and collapse to make it wider if you need to as well. You can also multi-select. Okay. <laughs> so you can then just do drag and drop and select more than one component. Um, I, I'm not going to go into the new availability of Planner. We've touched on that. There was the AMA that was run recently. I talked about it last month. If you didn't make it, you could go and watch the recording. There's also the Meet the New Microsoft Planner YouTube channel. There are 12 videos. One I recommend plugging into your um, learning environments or for your champs to go watch so that they know how to work with a new planner. Um, the new planner, I'm not sure, is this This is a long one. I'm not going to be playing this one, but I've embedded that in for you to be able to watch some of the new features that have flown in is around frontline task management. So um, there is some awesome, um, awesome functionality that's flown in in terms of some of the mandatory input and some of the approval pieces. The fact that we can now do some automatically send repeat tasks as well when it comes to recurring. Okay. As part of the moving forward, there's also the premium plan tasks that's actually been added to and assigned to me within my tasks in planner. So this means that assigned to me becomes, I think this was another really long, oh, it's not too long. This one, this one's actually just a quick short um, video, if I remember rightly. The planner app provides users a consolidated view of their tasks spread across to do Outlook, meeting notes, loop, and planner. However, the missing link has been the tasks created in the planner premium plans. So now they're all flowing in. You've got those premium web. plans now While flowing in to assign to me. While premium plans have been visible under my plans in new planner app, users had to go through each plan individually to check and update the task details. This is changing now. Premium plan tasks too are being added to assign to me view within my tasks and planner. Users can yeah, see as well as update the premium plan, plan tasks right, right within assigned to me view. Okay, we'll move forward. You know, kind of get the guest. Radio. Um, another one is the ability to be able to edit those fields in the assigned to me, uh, syncing of labels, checklists, and the tasks from the plans flowing in. Underneath whiteboard, you can now do at mention in comments. Yay, finally. So we got those at mentioning flowing through and you're going to get a notification via um, email and the Outlook bell to say that you've actually been mentioned in a whiteboard. OK, so you will get the, the blue at mention badge actually flowing in to be able to support you. And you're going to see that red badge in the comments to go, you know, there's, you've got a notification. <clears throat> there is in shifts some new frontline worker they can actually use excel now to create a schedule and import it into shifts okay so that's now flowing in 
Another one is there is um, in terms of Microsoft Designer. If you haven't had a play around with Designer, look, it's not a login that you can do yet on a enterprise in terms of Designer, but Designer is actually flowing through all over the place. I use the Swift keyboard on my phone and underneath the Swift keyboard, it's actually got Microsoft Designer. You can, anyone can log in with kind of a, you know, more personal email address to be able to create create those sort of 3D rendered images. So great part is you can use it as part of, you know, comms team and, and other stuff. So I've used it a whole heap recently for some client things. Another one, ClipChamp is removing the pauses and silences. It's done this AI recognition that flows through and helps you to delete any pauses that are longer than three seconds. So this is, you know, available and um, free to use in preview, but it will be part of the premium subscription after its preview phase. Okay, so you will need a premium subscription. Um, another one is there is a lot of new and exclusive audio tracks. There's over 200 um, intro, outro. Um, it is free to use and copyright free. So if you want to go and have a look at some of the audio that you can actually use inside ClipChamp on the, you know, the more free version, the freemium side of ClipChamp, they are in there with some updates. There's also some editing experience updates to be able to hold your shift key down, choose multiple items for for example, there's some freehand um, to be able to rotate and resize an image to your heart's content. So some new features in terms of the editing experience. Uh, there is a blog that's in there that talks about the link between Viva Engage usage and retention rates. I I particularly like this one from adoption perspective to be able to help us. Like if we wanted to go, well, why should we use Viva Engage more? It's actually showing that, you know, the retention rates are higher when we go in and use Viva Engage. I like that one. The intelligence um, importer we talked about with James, he showed us the intelligence importer when it comes to answers. So this is um, a new feature that has just rolled out. Now, take note, please, as part of the import that he did, it is Word, PDF and text. Unfortunately, not Excel. And I, I know that I have got a lot of questions and answers and it's all laid out in Excel documents, so you won't be able to use those. You also can't do an import of images at this point, okay, and other types at this point, but you do need a license, okay. Um, another one, delegates and admins can close conversations in storylines and communities. Then this means that, um, for example, maybe someone kind of goes, I, I really want to stop this now. I don't want to have it open for answering anymore, or I don't want people um, discussing this in my story. You can actually close it off. Okay. This gives a bit of psychological safety and it's up to then the um, uh, delegates, uh, your administrator and going in and we can we can actually turn that off. Okay, And you can turn it back on a well. It's like you can turn it off temporarily and bring it back on later if you need to. Um, the Viva Insights has had an update in the admin centre. So it's actually got this sort of new... Um, insights piece where it has as part of a little bit of kind of AI slash graph in there to go, these are the things that are going on that might be of relevance for you and it's surfacing things that are happening as well. You've also got there a new analyst insight. So this new analyst homepage coming in. So if you haven't actually used it before and you are in the analytics side, then it uh, depends on you know, what you've actually got in terms of the purchased of Viva Insights, but it will also surface for a delegate access as well to say that you've now got insights. So there is a new delegate access as well as the analyst homepage. So you can assign delegates. Another one is in Viva Learning, you can now recommend courses to a group. So what you can do is have those user groups and then just say for that particular group, you can go, I want to recommend, I don't know, some of this new co-pilot learning, okay? There is also the ability to have a new personalized hub when it comes to Viva connections. 
Now, this means that you can do sort of dashboard level targeting on a particular audience, for example. There's as part of this whole new Viva connections and it's being quite personalized. It means you can adjust it around. You can um, drag and drop so you can put things that you want to focus on in your part. So this is a whole personalized view for connections. The branding hub, which is kind of where I started before, but the branding hub means that you can actually update your Viva connections to be very specifically branded. Maybe you want to give it a particular name, a look and feel, certain colours, certain fonts to make it um, be more visually enhancing for your business so it comes into line with your brand. There is a video on how to actually do all of that in there in the link. It's a good nine minutes. Right. We won't go into that one. Another one is you can do regional announcements for your frontline workers through Viva Connections. So if you're using your Viva Connections piece, what you can do is you can send targeted messages depending on, you know, go in, you'd have to have your location, um, a particular job title that you might want to put in or a particular department. You can then go, I want to do an announcement that goes to these specific people. Viva Glint has, a, it had a bit of a release update. Go in, I'd recommend having a look. I won't dive into Viva Glint too much on this session. In terms of Viva Goals, if you are using Goals, what I particularly like is you can now attach images into a note. So when you go in, you go, it's improved by this much. Here is a screenshot of it, literally a you know diagram from somewhere else that you might go, this is what it looked like, we succeeded. Okay. So customised notes and images can be dropped in. There's also some custom check-in templates that are available that you can actually manage as well. Okay. So these templates, specify a particular template. An Outlook, you can in the new Outlook, by the way, so in the new Outlook, share your work hours and locations. So you can come into your settings in the back so you can start to set them. You can turn on ending meetings early or late. So you can go, I want it to have a meeting and it's only 50 minutes long, for example, or start five minutes after the hour. Uh, so these are different things that you can kind of drop in. You can keep declined meetings now in your calendar. So even though you've declined them, it's a bit like that uh, follow, you can decline them and have them stay in your calendar as free so that you can keep them there to keep an eye out. You can also adjust future events in the meetings series. So in uh, standard classic, it was if you made an adjustment in the system, it sort of does you want to do it from this one moving forward. So that has now come into play in the new Outlook. Another one is there's lots actually happening when it comes to um, meeting details and dropping that in there is the new meeting details experience that comes into outlook that joins to one note so these are now flowing together and as part of that it will give you ai generated tasks and documents and information that can drop into one note for you that way it makes that collaboration a little bit easier now this is a this is a blog that does what does a good meeting actually look like using the latest technology. So here it gives you, and it's got a lot more information in the blog, by the way, of how can you do OneNote and use Loop for your components and how they all kind of flow in together to be able to get you know, good task management, good you know collaborative notes. So I do like this particular blog. There's nothing new to Word. Uh -huh. Okay, Excel. Uh, some great stuff coming into the web component. Now, Excel for Windows, a little different. So the ones that I particularly liked, um, we've already talked about these top two in terms of Copilot. So the next one that I want to touch on is the copy and paste improvements and the sharing link. Now, the copy and paste and bringing information in, and that's not the one I'm going to necessarily talk about. Some of the scenarios to try is inking is now available for the desktop version. So you'll see now under the draw inside Excel on your desktop, there are some hints and tips, things like if you get your pen and you scrub out two cells, it will actually delete the content in those cells using your pen. 
So these are some of the things, and if you're using the right pen tool, okay, so you've got to use the right pen, you could go um, do a line, for example, and apply formatting to all, you know, all different things that you can actually have a bit of a play with. Okay. If you do do frozen panes, by the way, so if you go freeze the panes from here, it's not going to work, your pen not going to work for you. Okay. Another one is sharing a link on particular content in Excel. So this is actually flowing through to the desktop version to be able to go, I want to do a link and that link is just to certain content. Okay. There is in the online environment some more drag and drop enhancements and functionality to be able to support and, and manipulate data, um, the autofill coming in, the pay, copy and paste improvements of moving information from one to the other in Excel. Yay, because that was one of the issues with the online environment that often force people to the desktop, so that they are moving things fast. And um, trimming videos in PowerPoint for the web. So you don't necessarily need to go to the desktop to be able to trim videos now. You can do that through your online environment. Another one that I'm liking is in OneNote, you can actually transform your handwriting. So if it is on a bit of an angle, you can do your selection of it and then have it um, adjust so that it actually straightens out your handwriting, neatens it up and straightens it all out for you, especially if you write like me on a bit of an angle. <laughs> all right, this is currently in the Insider version, so it helps and supports, um, especially when it comes to you know formulas, tables, all sorts of things, straightening it out your words. Brainstorming for Visio is now a new feature that's come in. You can do a bit of mind mapping um, to be able to support you. Now, it depends on the plan that you actually have. And so you have to have the right license to be able to do mind maps. Retiring, of course, classic teams is done. We're all over in the new team. So we really need to make sure that we're flowing in. The other thing is with Microsoft Stream as an app kind of going, um across the desktop and online and it's sort of flowing in now to OneDrive and SharePoint that means the mobile app is going into retirement it's not its own kind of standalone anymore sort of a back end rather than its own app I always go in have a look most of the release notes at the moment they were all just fixes if you think something's not being done you can always have a look at the fixes I am presenting at the Digital Workplace Conference. I have been accepted. I will be talking about my Wheel of Fortune, how I do it, how I keep myself up to date in content, how I do hard and fast adoption programs to be able to roll out quickly, how I keep my knowledge up to speed for you guys, for example. So it is being held in Sydney this year. It's not actually in Melbourne. And next month, I may or may not have a ticket to give away if you want to join us next month so i'll um i'll be putting that putting that out uh, fairly shortly okay the microsoft events catalog go in have a look there's lots actually happening across the community and the community days and conferences around the world if you happen to be traveling and you want to join or some of them are online you can watch them okay as always, I've got where do I find a lot of my links and information. It's all still same user groups, my past uh, sessions. So if you didn't watch the past session fireside chat with Caruana, it is available. It is online on YouTube now. So next one is going to be on June the 4th. We will be having Swoop coming in. It is online on Meetup. You can go and register now. It will be based on how to run an actual successful intranet. So if you're on that journey, I would recommend going and have a little bit of a look. And of course, as always, if you have any thoughts, questions or comments, please feel free to hit me now or raise your hand. The presentation is available for you online. The recording I will make available through YouTube and I will provide the link to you in chat, both through Meetup, through my social media and all over the place. So um, I will provide that available. It might look like it's, you know, when I finish the recording, it might look like it comes up in chat, but you will need to go to the link I provide you. So you won't actually be able to use that one. So that covers off everything for the month. Um, we've been um, 
it's heading now on average two hours every month to go through all the what's new. Last month I said, do you really want me to do all of the new features or just focused on the adoption features? And everyone went into a riot and went, no, <laughs> we still want it. But anyway, thank you to those that actually stayed the course right till the very end. Um, as always, I do appreciate you as a community and I hope you get a lot out of it. If you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand now on anything that I've talked about or the questions or comments. Otherwise, it will be until next month.